a playlist original. Hey, what's up? It's your host, Tori, and who is ready to be petty? Welcome back to another episode of RTBP. I am so glad you're here and today is a really fun episode. Well, fun and serious. There is a serious element to it. But Jenna Vesper from Date Card Pod, Supermassive Twilight Hole and You Fancy Fine Podcast is here and we're chatting all things Colleen Ballinger and Olivia Rodrigo. We also recorded a bonus episode for both of our podcasts of the first three episodes of And Just Like That and that will be dropping Monday, July 3rd. So if you're listening to this on the Sunday when it gets released, that's tomorrow. (laughs) Um, It's really funny because, well, I don't know if it's funny, but I thought it was funny because my listeners, I did a little poly poll. I don't know why I'm saying listeners like you aren't the listeners, but I did a poll on my Instagram and I said, y'all, who's watching and just like that? And I want to know, but also it's because I want to talk about it and I want to make sure that people care. And literally it was like, 13%. 13%. No, it was like 33% was like, yeah, I am. And then the other two thirds were like, no. And I was like, okay, you're not watching. I'm going to do three episodes on it just like that. So I cover the first third with Jenna. I'm going to have Lisa on for the second, like the middle. And then um, I am just securing my last guest for the last couple episodes and the finale. So buckle up. (laughs) Uh, Also, I just want to say when I'm talking about Colleen in this epi, I say she has like 15 million on YouTube, but I triple checked my math. She actually has 9 million. She's lost about 40,000 subscribers since this incident happened. And okay, that's it for main pod news. Over on Patreon this week, I did a roundup of pop culture stories. So anything that I didn't talk about on today's episode, which was a lot, I covered Solo Dolo over on Z Patreon. Uh, super fun. Lots of new patrons this month. So welcome. Uh, we're so glad you're here. And I want to shout out this week, Carrie. Carrie, thanks so much for being a petty Betty. You've been around for a couple of months now, and I so appreciate you supporting my content and Eloise Eloise at the plaza I don't know if you live in a plaza but I wish that for you for sure (laughs) but Eloise thank you so so much you're the sweetest thing and I am so glad you support my little podcast okay friends I think it's time to get to today's episode there's no petty weight champion or this week in petty it's straight up pop culture But if you have a petty weight champ, like DM me, send me their names and we can, you know, fight them. (laughs) If you have a This Week in Petty that you just are dying to get off your chest, send that to me too. Okay, it's for realsies. Time to get to today's episode. Here's my combo with Jenna. I'm back with a very special guest. Jenna from Date Card Pod is here. Jenna, how are you? Good. Thanks for having me. Thanks for coming on. I love how we're talking. Like, we just didn't talk for two hours. <laughs> like, I felt so fake. I was like, I, who am I? Oh, my God. Good to see you, Tori. Yeah, like, long been, time to talk. Uh, we've been on the phone for, like, hours talking about <laughs> Sex in the City and Taylor Swift and everything. <laughs> literally. literally, And Twilight, obviously. Twilight. Oh, my God. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. So, I was just on your podcast, your second podcast, slash third podcast. Yeah, like, yeah. <laughs> um... Super massive Twilight hole, and we were talking about Robston, and it was uh, so much fun. Yeah, it was the best. You guys should check it out. Uh, even if you're not a Twilight person, hearing two individuals who have never been happier in their entire lives talk about a relationship from 2009 is the best time you'll ever have. And that episode is really more focused on like the celebrity element of it and yeah. the PR relationship elements of it. So you'll really love it. So definitely check it out. Yeah. If you're into celebs, but not a twilight, twi head, twi hard, mm-hmm. um, you, I feel like would still get stuff out of it, but yeah, it's so true. Just like 
there's something about Twilight. There's something about Taylor Swift, like that we just like can't stop talking about, <laughs> and it feels so good. And I'm I like, know you have to listen because you're just gonna hear two people like really having a good time. <laughs> yeah, having the best time. Seriously. Um, and so we're gonna talk about kind of a Twilight adjacent uh, <laughs> situation. Um, the new release from Oli- Olivia Rodrigo's new album guts her first lead single vampire and we're gonna talk about colleen ballinger (laughs) which is just like very different like (laughs) that's the right (laughs) turn (laughs) like plot twist we're also talking about grooming (laughs) i mean it's kind of related yeah actually you're right they actually are related and i shouldn't joke about it it's actually serious but i don't know we have to we have to also like have some uh I feel like lightness about it because otherwise we would just be sucked into a black hole mm-hmm. which was me so wait are we talking about Colleen first yeah are let's get host- into let's get into the bad so we can get to the good <laughs> <laughs> so true so I listen I Please never don't, you never <laughs> fucked with this bitch I never fucked with this bitch Same. I have never heard of her fucking once until this week and oh I had God. seen yeah so I had also seen I had seen tweets and things mention her over the last month but I like really did the thing where I was like oh I don't actually know that name literally at all like never have heard of it even in the slightest so I didn't even read the tweets like I wasn't even like I so I, didn't, I really didn't know what was happening. I just knew there was some kind of scandal, but I didn't know what it pertained to. Yeah. Because I just, like, literally was like, I don't have time to even read these tweets. I'm just scrolling past them. So then I saw the drop of the all too well 10 minute version and (laughs) was like, what? Yeah. Oh, uh, and then I saw her fucking weird face and then I saw everyone losing it and I was like, oh, it's time for me to, to figure out what's happening. And did I spend at least five hours one night watching multiple YouTube videos and things like, yes. And I feel pretty caught up now. (laughs) Good, good. Okay, this is what I'm curious about. You didn't know Colleen Ballinger, but did you know Miranda Sings? No. No, okay. Lucky. I also never fucked with Colleen Ballinger because, so she does a character, if you don't know. Yeah. Because you might know Miranda Sings and and not know the person behind it, but she does this character, Miranda Sings, who is like a bad singer that is a aspiring singer and uh people make fun of them because they they like she doesn't know she's bad and she's trying to be famous but um you know she sucks at singing like she wears like overlined lipstick and like kind of kid clothes and it's it's like the lowest form of comedy it's not funny at all um, but it was really popular in like mid 2000s, 2010s YouTube. And like she even parlayed it into a fucking Netflix show. So like it was big. And that's what's really wild to me is that I literally, I truly had never seen this woman in my life. Miranda Lucky. Sings. Like, and yeah. I, and I, and well, and I, I guess I attribute to it. Like, I'm not a YouTube girly. Right. I am trying because there's so much good content there and I yes. love deep dives. And so when I do jump on, it is to do deep dives and I, and I, I love it, but I am older and it's not that a 37, about to turn 38 year old can't have been a YouTube girly, but I wasn't. I just no, really you, wasn't. No, you no, I know, because I even feel like I kind of missed the boat, too, and I'm 31, and, like, I just feel like we just were on kind of the the cusp of, like, yeah. of it not being for us, I guess, yeah. but... Yeah, because, like, all these drama channels, all these things, I'm like, I don't know, I just, so I hear a little bit about this, uh, what is this, Dawson guy, what's his, what's his name? Oh, uh, Shane Dawson. Yeah, like he's apparently yeah. bad. Like I, I yes. don't know anything about his story. So yeah, yeah. I, it's a very it's actually I, very similar. It's a yeah, that's what yeah, I'm hearing like, about. So, yeah. but but what is interesting to me is that I get that she came up in a different time and a different environment for people who just are not us. But you're like you said, it's just the lowest form of comedy. Even when at its peak, I just like looking at these things and just like, how was this ever funny? And I guess maybe it was funny to teens, and I get that that it's just whatever but it was also like so is she making fun of 
She's making fun of the people who go on American Idol, essentially. Yeah, but in a way that, like, almost makes it seem like she's also, like, kind of imitating people with, like, cognitive disabilities. Yeah. And, like, you know, again, you're right. Like, people that are so out to lunch about their singing capabilities that they go on American Idol and do one of those auditions. Like, you're totally right. Like, it's just, I don't know. It's... But I don't, like, like that's, that's just not funny to me. I don't know. Like, right. it, uh, yeah. And but like, I know that we did that, though. I was just going to say, I was just going to say, meaner, younger me did, like, the American Idol auditions, 100%. Yeah. Nowadays, yeah. I'm like, uh, fucking take it or leave it. Like, I don't know. I It's just, like, not for me. Yeah, because, like, often... And what I think she's, like, making fun of, too, is that, like, it was, like, people of color. It was people who English wasn't their first, first language, language. And, yeah, yeah might have some uh, disabilities yeah. or might be autistic. Yes. And, I'm, like, watching this, I'm, like, she's making fun of autism. Like, this is, like, yeah. so – and she's – racist like it's so racist it's like the character is racist and then you look into like the videos that have been pointed out where she does racist things yeah and you're like okay it's a double whammy but like how did anyone think any of this was okay and that i just i understand there's just a different whatever and different people's humor but it's when you start to deal into it you're like oh my god totally and so basically what happened in 2020 is there was a reckoning of youtubers like Colleen, like Shane Dawson, where people, fans in particular, or ex-fans, would make videos being like, this is what happened to me. Or like, do you remember this? Like, this person made sick, gross comments against marginalized people, and in particular. Yes. Um, but um, people were also talking about how she had like inappropriate relationships with her fans, that she... Um, really kind of cultivated parasocial relationships with, like, 13-year-olds when she was in her 30s. Like, no 30-year-old, unless you're, like, their parent, should be talking to a 13-year-old. Like, seriously, like, it's so fucking weird. Also, like, this just always blows my mind because I'm like, "What what are you even talking about? Like, it's just so foreign like so alien to yeah me. Like, and I, uh, I'm not trying to like I, I mean I think maybe she's like mentally ill <laughs> literally or, or like I mean I think most people can uh, maybe safely assume from our armchair that she's a narcissist yes um but like yeah like there's something if I'm being nuanced there's like an element of like that saying where like you um stay frozen at the like age that you become famous and yeah. But the thing is, like, she came famous when she was in her probably like late twenties, like, yeah, like early thirties. Yeah. So like, that's yeah. not so that's not even quite an excuse. Like, had she become famous when she was like sixteen or seventeen, I'm like, okay, yeah, we can she's, see where the you know. yeah. But it's like I actually just think she's fucking weird. Like, she's just she. I I don't feel like I can call her a pedophile. Yeah, know? yeah. But I, the, I she agree. has a weird. She has a weird like thing thing about kids kids. yeah I think like okay so like I think part of it also her age is 36 so like she she has been around yeah so like when did she start her YouTube career uh in 2007 2009 ish so that was um you know like 15 years ago so she would have been at the time yeah 20 like about 20 years old okay fair yeah okay Actually, so yeah, there's a little bit of that, but. I think that YouTubers in particular Mm. realize that kids, just like we were saying how we aged out of, or like we were kind of aged out of YouTube. I think a lot of YouTube creators realize that kids actually drive most of the views. Mm -hmm. Like Logan Paul, all of his content is like geared towards like 12 year olds, which is so weird to me. Cause I'm like, again, you're like an old man not an old man he's like 30 but like he's my age but like but like you're like in in compared to a child it's old like but Mm -hmm. I just think that they know that um YouTube is uh, driven like the money and the 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 views 
like you follow the children because they're the yeah. ones like watching for eight hours a day or whatever and you know getting all the ads and stuff like yeah it's so yeah. true my friend connie who is a youtube girly was like i was talking to them about it and they were like yeah so many youtubers have been exposed for um pre- being predatory with kids who grew up on their content it's like it's almost yes. and so that got me really icked out because i was like it's a perfect breeding ground for people who want to yes. have inappropriate relationships with kids. It's like the chicken or the egg with like priests and like coaches and teachers and stuff like that. It's like, did they have this inclination before or did they get into the career like because mm-hmm. like because of it or or did they grow like not grow yeah. this, but like, yeah, did this happen because yeah. yeah, lean in because like. Of their careers. Like, it's really icky. And um, also, I want to put this in the context, too. Colleen's brother is a family YouTuber. Ooh, and, like, fam- yeah, like, family YouTubers, like, are really the scum of this earth. Like, really so bad. So, like, again, this is just, like, the context for what is happening. Mm-hmm. Um, so, basically, yeah, in 2020... Um, there was a person named Cody who spoke out about um well, it was actually Adam Adam McIntyre spoke out in 2020. They okay, so the, oh right, like, the okay. So Adam was the original person. Mm-hmm. So you're right. And then Cody spoke out about Colleen in 2023. Mm-hmm. So Adam spoke out about Colleen in 2020 and he said that um he was a fan like living in I think he's from Ireland. Yeah. And he talked about how she was on a live. I think it was with her husband at the time. And she was opening, like, like unboxing PR packages. And she got lingerie. And uh, I don't know. They got into something with the fan about, like, oh, I'll send you something. Yeah. And then she was like, um, oh, it'd be funny if we sent the lingerie. And I was like, let's think about that for two fucking seconds. (laughs) Like, you're sending lingerie to a 13-year-old kid in Ireland. And apparently his mom, like, intercepted the package and was like, you're not, like, following Colleen Ballinger anymore. Yeah. Because then it got really weird. And, like, this inappropriate relationship she had with Adam was so deep. There's so many screenshots of her asking really inappropriate sexual questions and like what's your favorite position yeah she had a group chat full of teens talking to her fans creating this really unhealthy parasocial relationship but not even parasocial anymore because that's supposed to indicate there's a one-way connection just a relationship with these fucking kids unfortunately they the teens and fans are being manipulated by this but of course they would like it's it's wild it's it's really honestly a really sick thing we have to talk about in our society the way that we are so can be so easily obsessed with celebrities because of the parasocial element but yeah. how that can be used to abuse people it's i'm i'm happy it's being talked about and yeah she asked him about sex positions he's a virgin he was like one day he's like oh my ass looks good to the group chat she's like send pics and then so it's like all of that and to send that same kid The lingerie, it's like... It's it's so disgusting. But yeah, and like, also, when you're in your, like, kind of early days of your fandom, you have access to fans through, like, yeah, like, group chats or Facebook Mm -hmm. groups or, like, whatever. Whereas, like, if you are, like, a celebrity that's, like, so far... Like, Kim Kardashian doesn't have, like, a Facebook group where she's talking (laughs) to fans, you know? Like, but these YouTubers, they're so D-list that they do, and... A lot of them, again, are just so desperate for fame. They'll do anything to cultivate their fandom and make their fandom, uh, uh, like, ride or dies for them. Right, which is what was happening. So Adam yeah. was one of the many ride or dies that was defending her in all sorts of areas of the media. And then eventually got to the point where he was partially running her content. 
and was given her password to Twitter. And how it all popped off was that he eventually tweeted this joke about Megan Trainer, which a lot of people in all these videos are like, I don't get the joke. I think it's hilarious. But, <laughs> like, what was the joke? Because I love how I'm coming fucking... out with like a thing. I'm coming out in 30 minutes. I'm coming out with a big thing. And it was like, Colleen oh, behind, yeah, uh, with a rainbow flag behind her. And then the next tweet was, I'm coming out as a as Megan, a Megan Trainer. Trainer. Yeah. <laughs> I love how Megan Trainer just catches a stray here. <laughs> like, like. Oh, God, it's so funny. So, uh, yeah, and then, but that became like a controversy online because it was like queer baiting. And then she was like, oh, well, I actually like didn't tweet it. It's this teen that I'm making do free labor for me who I promised I would pay them eventually. Like they were promising Adam that he would become, like, her intern and get, like, a real job after high school, which is just, like, oh, my Again, God. Again, like, when when someone in a position of power holds over your head compensation or a reference letter or a job, like, a promotion or whatever, like, that is fucked because people like Adam would be in a position where they would need those types of things. Like, Literally. it's so ugly. So gross. That's exactly what we talk about when we say position of power, like imbalance, like yeah. in relationships. It's literally that providing something as a goal to be taken away from you. So she she says, actually, I don't want to talk to you anymore because you're you're trying to ruin me, even though <laughs> I approved this tweet or whatever and did all these horrible things. And Adam proceeds to get properly you know, roasted off the face of the internet, except for they did yeah. actually come back and have like a cool YouTube channel or whatever. But yeah. They, th- yeah. then, then Adams, um, yes. Like I feel like it's like getting, like Adams getting his like justice this year with this, but at the time yeah, he like, this shows also how much, uh, power Colleen has is because we didn't even say, again, I didn't know this was happening. Cause, but like the general, we, we didn't even say, oh, just wait, you have a teenager running your socials. Instead, we were just like, yeah, like, fire him. <laughs> like, yeah, and actually, he's a piece of shit. And he's yeah, a and like and a liar. Like, oh, my God. And it was yeah. because people like Cody, who's the other player in the story, yeah. who is another ex-fan of Colleen Miranda Singh, and they were... Um, they then pronounced and they were totally manipulated by Colleen as well to like make smear campaigns and make videos, you know, that helped belittle Adam's story and lots of other fans I'm sure have come forward with similar like, you know, stories and, uh, yeah, it's crazy. Yeah, a lot of fans have come forward, not in videos per se, but, like, even just in tweets being, like, yeah, "Yeah, um, she asked me to dress, or she asked her fans, again, children, to dress in revealing clothing, and then they would get called up on stage, and she would, like, mock them, and because I guess there was a, a bit where Miranda was, like, a prude or, like, really, like, yeah didn't know about sex or like whatever and like or like thought everything was born like I don't know it's just again like not fucking funny and so she would literally ask kids to wear revealing clothing and then get on stage and like mock them and some of these people are like that was like the worst moment of my life yeah I saw a video one where it was like it was really horrible the, the girl looked really genuinely like, actually, this is not what I wanted at all. <laughs> uh, I, I'm sure there's people, obviously, that was like, hey, this isn't like sitting well with me. But it is so wild that at the time, like this kind of went over like the again, like the general population's mm-hmm. like head. Mm-hmm. Which is why it would just continue to happen. You yeah. Know? Yeah. Like it's wild. And like there's, you know, she's. I just really can't believe, like, there's so many screenshots of, like, tweets where she talks about raping people, or, like, using it as a joke, rather. There's this ongoing bit of her uncle molesting her. Yeah. (laughs) Um, And I was like, how is any, if I was a parent, like, how is any of this okay for my kid? Because, like, imagine I'm a 13-year-old and I actually really don't know about porn yet, and now I'm learning about porn on this fucking YouTube channel. And it's in a silly, goofy way, but it's like, I shouldn't even be. Yeah, Ugh. you're a child. Yeah, I know. I know. 
Ugh. No, oh. it's it's so bad. Like, yeah. And but finally, like in 2023, Cody's like video about her abuse of her fans like stuck, uh-huh. and she like essentially got canceled over the last like two weeks. So like finally, it like blew up. There was articles, videos, everything being like, "Hey, this is fucked." justice for these fans like we don't need any more miranda sings content <laughs> yeah truly i'm good we're good actually we're good we're actually good on that and so so what does colleen do oh my god so like this is the thing this is why i do want you to get into youtube i'm not like i wouldn't say i'm like a youtube girly but i definitely dabble i know the main players i probably don't know some of the niche content but like when I say YouTube, like, apology videos are so iconic. Like, they're mm, so, so – they're true. part of the the YouTube lore, the, yeah, the yeah. economy. Mm-hmm. Like, it's just, like, a, a YouTuber fucking up, posting a really bad, really fake – Apology. Apology online. Maybe it has receipts. Maybe it doesn't. And then it gets a bunch of – yeah, deep dives. Like, this is just, this is the YouTube mm. economy. Um, it's a running joke at how bad and insincere um, these, yeah, like, and when I say apology videos, half the time they're not apologizing mm-hmm. authentically. Yeah. But, like, yeah, it, it's a running joke at how bad people are for taking accountability, doing it in a sincere way, and actually, like, changing. Um, but this one tops like and let me tell you there are some rough apology videos out there like after Tanacon, the whole bi sister like uh jeffree star tati Uh westbrook james charles scandal shane dawson like there is some bad shit out there but she just decided i'm gonna post a 10 minute version of a ukulele song on my third channel, this is another classic YouTuber thing. Oh. Because, like, this is very David Dobrik, too. Oh. Where it's, like, you have your main channel, and then you have your, like, your secondary channel. Then you have your vlog channel, but you would obviously never want it to go on the main channel and live there. You want it to hide on the third channel, your least popular channel. So she puts a, a ukulele version of an apology video to her vlogging channel. Mm. 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 And um, it is so bad. Did you watch the whole thing? I did. I was yeah. lucky to have watched it through Adam's channel. Yes. Because I, I, I wanted to watch, I wanted to at least watch one video about the situation before I watched the video. So I found Adam quickly, watched his original or his like more, more recent video being like, Thanks, Cody, for exposing. Yes, yes. Let's whatever. So I got, like, all of it, literally. It was, like, an hour and a half long. But I was like, okay, I feel kind of ready. And then before I could even watch the apology video, Adam's new video came up where it was like, I'm going to react live to this apology. So that was how I saw it, which I recommend. That was, like, a great offer. uh, Because just to hear Adam's side of it through all was really great. But I, oh, my God. Like, it's so disrespectful on so many levels. Yes. Like, making so many jokes. The fact that she even just, like, yeah, wrote out these lyrics, tried to make, like, like, was clearly on, like, rhymezone.com. I, I, like, I can't. And was so, so rude. So rude. And, like, blatantly just being like, yeah, facts look like, lies look like facts when you see the gaps or don't see the gaps or whatever oh my god yeah and like i didn't know that i shouldn't be dming fans or like <laughs> like, like toxic oh, um, gossip train she's like <laughs> not like a groomer but like a loser yeah yeah you can i'm be not both. a groomer <laughs> i'm just a loser like, yeah, you can for sure be both. I, I really think that that's actually the pairs really well. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's actually so bad. And she did the classic thing where it's like no makeup, simple outfit, sitting like not in the bright lights of a studio, but like just on her couch. And then she starts this song. And I'm pretty sure she prefaces it like, well, my PR team basically like said I shouldn't do this, but like. Five, six, seven, eight. Like, they were uh, like, she, they said I couldn't 
not sing it. Yeah. La, 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 la. yeah, yeah. It's like that Ariana <laughs> clip from Victoria's. They didn't say I couldn't sing or whatever. Like, so true. And she did it and she really fucking went for it. I mean, went yeah. so in and like, uh, 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 oh, so I guess everyone else is so perfect. So That's you've never done a that- single thing wrong. That's the thing that pisses me off, too, because it's like, no, we're not saying that. But people that hate cancel culture think that, that it's like, oh, well, you are all perfect and you've never done anything and I made a mistake and now I'm paying for it. It's like, no, we're not saying we're perfect. And I actually think that Cody and Adam, I can't remember which person, but like I one of them, I think it was Cody had like a little bit of drama surrounding them. Yeah. But it's like, okay, you don't need to be a p- perfect victim for for oh, us you. to believe yeah. like this person. Yeah. And then also it's like we're not canceling you for one mistake. Or like a mistake is like breaking a glass or like um well, like I, people said that Jenna Marbles, I wasn't a Jenna Marbles person, but I yes. think if anything, I would have been a Jenna, like she would have been the yes. one I would have gone <laughs> yeah, for, yes, right? Yeah. But I guess she put her fish in a tank that was like going to kill the fish. And yeah. she did this a whole apology video. Yeah. And blah, blah, blah. But anyway, that's a mistake. That's yes. a mistake. I put 100%. my fish in the wrong thing. Yes. I, I, a mistake is that, not yes. a continued history of inappropriate relationships with your fans. For 10 years. <laughs> Literally. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. 100%. It's a mistake is something like unplanned and accidental where it's like, no, you planned and strategized and like knew what you were doing. Like, yeah, it, it's so bad. And then, yeah, basically she's just like, oh, like we didn't think like sending lingerie like to a 13 year old. Like, we just didn't think at the time. We thought it was, like, a funny joke. And I'm just, like, but how do you not think when you, like, uh, the, the, that, like, I don't know. Like, I'm just, like, what? How does that slip your mind? And it's so like, fucking weird. But I guess in the end, like, just apologize. I don't know. Like, I and then, like, she belittles this other teen that had their legs spread apart on stage for a yoga bit and... And, like, she's, like, oh, I'm getting chastised for a fart joke I made five years ago. It's, like, honey, like, that's no, not it. But we're like not also talking about the fart joke. Just <laughs> apologize then. I don't know. Because yeah. intent versus impact. You made that teen feel uncomfortable. And you could just be, like, I took that bit out of my fucking set now. And, like, that would have been fine. Like, it was just, like, there are people like this are allergic to admitting they did anything wrong. Because I can understand that with a big platform, admitting something is wrong allows in so much more critique but in the end i would think that your overall platform will survive an apology it has it clearly it does for many people if you just kind of even if you're super vague about it like i would love it if she actually stopped making contact forever but i'm just saying there's a reality in which she could have just been like i really did do some things and i don't feel like it was my intention. And as she said in the video, it wasn't my intention, but I do feel like shit. Like she could have said that. And she could have just said, I am sorry for the way I made people feel moving forward. I'm going to grow and learn and people can decide whether they believe that or not. That's what you do. 100%. Because that's the other thing is like, I'm pretty sure she still sits at about like 15 million uh, YouTube subscribers it's like she has a, a huge house in uh, you know California it's like she will be fine her channel will be fine mm-hmm. um, and you're right because I wonder even how many of those subscribers know about this incident but the thing is is that's why she posts it on her mm-hmm. like the one that has like two million or whatever because she doesn't want the rest of her fans to to figure it out but she was married to a person named joshua david Mm -hmm. and they had a very like public uh divorce because again they covered a lot of their relationship on uh her youtube Mm -hmm. and he's actually sticking with 
her fans. That's so good. I love that. Which is, yeah, which I think is really um, bold. So he says, anyone feeling hurt and gaslit right now, my message to you is this. Your experiences were real. The proof is there. Your trauma should be taken seriously. Mm -hmm. The proof is there. Your anger is justified. The proof is there. You deserve better. Take your power back. Sending you love. That is really, that's just a good tweet in general. That's really sweet. Yeah. And he talked about how he was like gaslit too. Because I think he would like obviously he was present for some of this stuff. I I won I do wonder how much he was, yeah, you know, like knew around. about this going on. But yeah, uh, it's also he wrote rates, which I think this is also key. I have no desire to use this as a catalyst for my YouTube comeback. It's not a safe place for me. I'm past that. My voice is only here to help validate those that are hurting. Nothing more. I have no need to make any money off of this. That is gross and not in my heart whatsoever. Oh, that's really sweet. Oh, I love that. Yeah, I think one of her former friends, Johnny, has also been coming out a lot, too, against her. And he did some kind of series of tweets I don't have in front of me, but, like, that was talking about the the yoga incident and was, like, I genuinely, like, when it happened, there was people backstage who were, like, Morant, like, Colleen, that was not okay. And she was just like, no, uh, it's fine. And, like, but they, so that he was really admitting how bad he felt that he never, like, stood up stood and, like, up. Yeah. and did things. Yeah. Um, and he has to live with that. But I am, like, happy that he is now, obviously. But yeah. But it it's just, like, crazy. And yeah. she, and it just goes to prove she knew. She knows. She knew. She didn't care. Yeah. You're right, because there probably was people on her team that maybe said something, and then they probably were, again, like, fired or mm-hmm. demoted or whatever until mm-hmm. she had all yes people on her team. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Well, wild times. Wild times. Um, yeah. She also body checked. <laughs> oh my god! I wrote that in my fucking notes. Literally, you could you couldn't not put in the song about your tiny little skinny bony, bony back. back. Like it's just again classic two thousands YouTube. She never moved past that. Like she just had to be like, I'm still skinny. <laughs> like. like it made me sick. Sick. Yeah. But anyway, I hope she fucking fucks off forever. We all know she won't, but. Totally. And sending, yeah, love and light to um, all of the victims. Okay. Let's move on to something, uh, a more positive note. Uh, we <laughs> finally have new music from Olivia Rodrigo. Yes. Thank God. Don't listen to Colleen's. <laughs> ukulele song listen to olivia rodriguez rodrigo's new song vampire what are your like uh, like initial thoughts on the song it just came out like two days ago it is very good i loved sour i had never heard of this woman before my life i'm so fucking old y'all i feel like i had no i still don't know any of the key players you wrote these people's names zach i I was like i've literally never heard a single one of these people so i'm probably the worst person talked about this but i but i loved sour like that was such a good album so yeah. I am very excited for this sophomore album and Vampire did not disappoint. It is much, li- it brought me back to Sour, but it is definitely different. You can hear a maturity in her voice. She, I'm excited that she's talking about a different relationship. Like I'm, I'm here for it. I'm here for that type of music, obviously as a Swifty. I think it's great. And I, oh my gosh. And yeah, so you're saying it's the same producer as Driver's License. Oh, iconic. Yeah. Iconic. Yeah, so she worked with the same um, guy that did Driver's License and did, like, a lot of the Sour production. Mm-hmm. And I totally agree that it's it's different, but it's still, like, very much her style and voice. And it's a bop. Like, obviously, like, I actually, as soon as we're done recording this, I'm literally going to put it on. I know, like, I'm, it, like, it's, in my head right now. <laughs> I was, like, itching to, like, play it right now. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, it's just really, really good. And you're right. It's very Taylor Swift-esque, which we're going to talk about. You know, a lot of people said a lot of her sour songs were about maybe Joshua Bassett. Mm -hmm. And now we've moved on to other guys and in a very like John Mayer way. But like... Mm -hmm. It's it's good. I'm I'm living for it to be honest. Mm-hmm. Very speak now coded. Oh, I know which is okay. so <laughs> so because like the drama is that like people are like oh my gosh she's trying to like say something about Taylor and like come for her or whatever. We'll get into it later. But 
it's fine. But I'm all like, but it's fine. Like, like, let's just like let people enjoy people <laughs> or enjoy things. Yes. <laughs> yeah. And like, okay, it also makes sense that like, so she's, I think, 19 right now. And it also makes sense that if her, your greatest inspiration is Taylor Swift, that it would be Taylor Swift-esque, just like how, you know, Taylor's influences were like Joni Mitchell for Red yeah. and stuff like that. Like, yeah. it just, it, I don't know. It, it just makes sense. So yeah, people are times. maybe reading into it too much, but. I agree. So the song is allegedly about Zach Bia or Adam Faze, which are two guys that she dated Mm -hmm. um for like very short stints like just a couple months Mm -hmm. uh she first dated adam phase in eight when she was 18 and Mm -hmm. he was 24 which is definitely referenced in the song because uh she talks about how like the guy went for her went for me and not her because girls your age know better yeah brutal brutal love it i love it Adam Faze is a producer. Mm-hmm. Okay. They were seen like kissing. Like there was like these car pics that are burned into my brain. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, this was in 2021. Mm-hmm. But I again, I think they only dated for like a couple months. They don't follow each other on like mm-hmm. Insta or anything anymore. And she never talked about him publicly. Okay. She, mm-hmm. you know, only was like seen out on dates and like mm-hmm. running errands with mm-hmm. him. So the other person is Zach Bia, who is like a music exec. Uh, Shannon from Fluently Forward did a whole episode on him. So if you want the tea, the deep dive, you can head over there. Um, But she dated him again for a couple of months when she was 19 and he was 26. And that's why people are saying, okay, it's defo about Zach Bia, because in the song she says, or she said uh, about the lyrics that she wrote them in her 19th year on Oh, Earth. right. Instagram. Yes, 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 yes. Ooh, that is pretty damning. Yes, Yeah, yes. so it's like if you wrote the lyrics on the 19th year, I think you are referring to Zach Bia. And Zach Bia, he's definitely, I think, a fame fucker. Like, he yeah. dated Madison Beer. Yeah. Uh, before, which, you know, is a singer kind of associated with Justin Bieber, Scooter mm-hmm. Braun, mm-hmm. like, and so true. he moved on to, like, the next, you know, hottest thing. Yeah, and then it also seems like, per the videos I watched on TikTok, he is, like, always out. He was somebody who, like, notoriously is, a like, a club promoter, has always been out. Yeah. So he only comes out at night like a vampire. Yeah. Uh, I think people have said that, like, that one's also pretty well documented as far as, like, they did date for, like, close to six months, which yeah. she mentions in the song. So I kind of feel like we have to assume it's him. But uh, either of these men sound like a great... <laughs> Totally. And sometimes I think that these songs are, yes, maybe they're about one specific person, but also like it's a bunch of experiences kind of amalgamated into one. Mm-hmm. So like I think it could be almost like both of them, but she's obviously kind of throwing the the barbs at Zach. And I would be remiss to not mention that the scuttlebutt online is that a lot of people almost at first listen were like, oh, it's about Taylor Swift because yes, of the whole this. drama of when yes. Taylor's team asked her to give Taylor credit on to the songs from Sour and how you never meet your your idols because they will destroy you and that there's now bad blood. They never post about each other anymore and that... There's been just lots of, like, random, like, digs on yeah. Olivia's side towards Taylor. You listen to the song Nothing New and you're like, this had to have been written about the Olivia situation. Uh, I will, you know, they'll say they got the map from me and I'll say I'm happy for them and then cry myself to sleep. Like, yeah, ah, it's what yeah. we were just saying. Like, she took inspiration from Taylor for these types of things and other people, but you, know, you can't deny it. But so... Like, how's the castle built off of people you pretend, you pretend to, care to care about? about? I was you literally just... <laughs> just looking at that 
lyric that very much seems like Taylor Swift because oh now I do God. feel like she lives in a castle, castle like whereas before it was very like girl squatty and now it's like so protected and secretive that really reminded me of Taylor it's so castle driven the diamonds like the jeweled element of it I don't really yeah. know yeah you make the worst mistakes look fine because Taylor always has this PR, but like it makes, you know, Olivia look naive. Uh, yeah. I mean, you could just say that Taylor, a lot of people might think that she's like a bloodsucker and a fame fucker. And everyone told me you were bad news, but I believed you. Like, I, I could just see how, how it could happen, but like she does use like he him pronouns and it yeah. is a, it's about a relationship it's about, yeah it, there's it's a love song listen folks she literally talks about loving them it's a love song but i don't know but you also know. you love your idols it's true okay so like yeah i think it's about a guy but i do think like some of it is a little bit tailor coded because even like because girls your age know better it's like yes. do you think it's because it's like oh she was taylor's also in her 30s with 15 years of fame and yeah. celebrity under her belt talking to Olivia who like yeah is just coming up in the yeah. world like absolutely yeah girls Taylor's age know better yeah and Taylor, but Taylor doesn't know better because she's a flawed human <laughs> like she's yeah. you yeah. know <laughs> I used to think I was smart but you made me look so naive that also really rings true about like I thought I was smart writing sour and like having these good songs but then you ripped me and my team apart yeah. like in I didn't court. expect that yeah like I didn't yeah. how did I what yeah I love uh, how we can make anything about Taylor Swift like we're so actually good. fucked <laughs> <laughs> we're literally the worst <laughs> we, we are the I need worst to like wear some grippy socks so <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I was on a date the other day and she said talking about something that she was doing in her life, she's like, yeah, it's been a long, a long time coming. And, like, my head just, like... I, like I, <laughs> it's been a long, long time, time coming. coming. <laughs> and I just, like, I was supposed to be listening to this woman <laughs> talk about her life. <laughs> I'm dead. But something happened to me like that, too. Like, someone said, like, I don't know, something so just normal. And in my head, like, I was like, salt <laughs> the rest of it. Like, I don't even know what it was. Uh, so funny. Okay, let's talk about the music video. It's so Twilight coded and Speak Now coded. But let's talk about Twilight. So, okay, like, obviously Vampire is the name of the song. Uh, so obviously, like, it's very Twilight. She has talked about, like, her love of, like, you know, like, Paramore and the Twilight era and, like, just all of that stuff. And I think she uses it to her – she definitely uses, like, cliche teen girl, like, I can't even parallel park type of very smart little Easter yeah. eggs in her music. So and making this – Twilight Coded is so fucking smart, like, in, yeah. in terms of, like, a business move. Yeah, the renaissance of it all, the... Yeah. And, uh, having this, like, niche thing, it's so, it's just so online. It's yes. Just so, like, everyone is, She's like, very loves online. their hand. So it's, like, she yeah. really does that so well. And yeah. it, like, showing old throwbacks and things, like, Taylor could never. <laughs> um, Literally. You know, it's, like, all these things. And it's so beautiful. And, like, uh, they're... Uh, somebody made a great I hope maybe we'll include it on like the, the on your Instagram or something but like she's wearing the same dress essentially as Kristen Stewart in the promo photos for Twilight it's so good the lighting is exactly like it uh this supposedly came out on the 13th anniversary of Eclipse I love that love Girl. that for us Girl, yeah my so favorite good. my favorite Twilight book and it, I just supposedly is Olivia's, and yeah, um, it's and she's just... laying in a goddamn field. Oh, so and like, good. if you think Twilight, you think of the field. I would say is like the number one like location. Yeah, and her like she's uh, like has the long brown hair and the like rosy lips and stuff. Like very simple pale. makeup. Yeah, very uh, Bella. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. It is. I, and very also like Dracula, which is Twilight is also. Yeah. I love the scene in the first Twilight movie where they f 
Edward is Dracula. Yes, yes. Like, ugh, it's just so smart and so good. so good. Yeah, but the music video is very interesting. Like, at times I kind of was like, oh, maybe I'm too old to understand what's happening and is this art because it was, like, filmed so interesting. The camera is moving in a way that was, like, confusing to me. And and then it's, like, then it you find out that it's actually a stage performance and she's yeah. performing and there's an audience uh, so I like that commentary. And then she's, the stage is falling apart. She is bleeding because this thing fell down, this lighting rig, and it's caused a fire. And she's almost like, I was like, she dead? Like, she, it was, I know. <laughs> I wild. actually, like, I'm kind of, I hate gore. Yeah. And even this was, I was like, oh, this is, like, kind of graphic. Like, it yeah. was a lot of blood and, like, she gets, yeah, straight up hit by a light. I thought that the moving camera and like her running and stuff, it mm-hmm. felt very teen girl, like mm. um, being disoriented mm. by this guy. And then the running, I just felt like, like it was like labored running. And yeah. that also felt very like. It was very yeah, like, like it, it just was, she's like putting a performance on. She wasn't really running, you know, like all of them are just behind her and she's running, but then she's kind of like. Do, stopping and like posing and all these things yeah really disjointed well yeah n- now ever you know you watch it you're like oh that's in- like it's all intentional to show this like bigger picture. picture um but it was like confusing to me at first but i was like i think this is why this is good art <laughs> and i'm really excited to see what else comes from this because yeah it's different yeah, and she said in a live promoting this song that this was one of her favorite songs, but there's one other song in the album that she really like likes, and I'm I like can't wait for that. Interesting. Okay, let's talk about the Taylor inspo just because we have to, and then let's wrap up. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I talked about this a little bit over on my Patreon, but like when she revealed the album name, it was revealed to fans through like letters and like an unscram scramble Mm -hmm. and I was like or word scramble and I'm like babe (laughs) this is so Taylor like you can't give a word scramble to your fans uh (laughs) and not and people not think of like all the vault like song titles and stuff like that and then also I feel like with Taylor especially her earlier music but all of her music it's always like which guy is it which which guy is this song about Mm -hmm. and now we have that with Olivia where she like dated as you know any normal 18 and 19 year old but dated two guys and now we're like is it about Zach is it about Adam like could it be Josh like Mm -hmm. could it be Taylor (laughs) just us yeah Yeah, that's just us though yeah Yeah. I know and I was like of course my eyes like I like when you're like which guy is it I was like oh girl yeah 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 Uh, because I am currently deep in my mental illness in the regards Mm -hmm. that this is gonna maybe I don't think speak now or I'm sorry I don't think dear John is about John Mayer I am one of those sick galers that believes that Martin Johnson is the true muse oh yes (laughs) do you think that's why at her concert the other night yeah she was like lay off John like I don't care Cause it's not. She's like, I put him through enough. He did. Enough. He's, he's done fifteen not, years of this. Yeah. yeah, and he is not gonna stand for it because he is online. Jake isn't, and yeah. he's already proven that he's not gonna stand by it. And I think yeah. she's like, I think it's a lot of things at play. And I'm very much willing to, since I wasn't around for Speak Now OG, yeah. I cannot speak on it. But I just, you know. Yeah, what, what for else? sure. No, but, I'm down that rabbit hole, too. Uh, so, yeah, regardless. But it, it's still, like, it is. She got the map from Taylor. And yeah. And it's fine. And I and I think, I don't want the listeners to think that we are, like, anti any of this. I think it's great. I, I uh, this is what music is. And it's art. And it's good. And I really it's loved so good. Sour. And Sour yes. was so healing to me. And yeah. I think it's probably done wonders for the youth. So I'm just excited. 100%. You know. 100%. I know we're, like we're you know teasing her a little bit but Mm -hmm. I will say you're right to just make sure this is driven home I love her music I really like her as like I think she's a genuinely good person Mm -hmm. I think she is a very Gen Z 
a star. Like she, I don't think, yeah, like I, I think she speaks her mind about a lot of like political things, which is very not Taylor. Yeah. And <laughs> yeah, and yeah, I, I just, I do appreciate her music so, so much. Yeah. There was a little bit of a rumor that like Taylor was going to drop like a music video for Cruel Summer because she mm-hmm. was releasing it as a single. Mm-hmm. And none of that came to fruition. So I guess we were just clowning. Yeah. What's what's new? <laughs> what's new? Uh, <laughs> what's new? But yeah, I mean, it is all being really, it's all very strange. I, I, I don't like the fights that are happening and I feel like we've promoted the infighting yeah, yeah, through this literally, episode. But I'm literally, just, I'm just uh, reporting the facts, everybody. It's is. just the facts. facts. Okay, again, we equally like think that they are talented, yes, beautiful, smart women. Like It's just hard yeah. not to raise your eyebrows a smidge when – this new song is released like a week before Speak Now and then it's purple and it's similar and she's doing word bubble searches and I just like it's uh but it's like I also don't think it's Olivia like I think if anything it's her management her team, team. yeah that's like yeah of course we're gonna cause a stir and make people think there might be a whatever 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 and yeah I just think it's interesting and yeah it, it, but it's also like What's the truth? What's not the truth? And where's Cruel Summer? And wait, Speak Now is coming out? And is there even a single for that? And where's the music video for that? And then as soon as Speak Now's promotion is, like, starting to get into its gear, we have a fish- We have the album for Olivia. I'm like, yeah. I don't... It's, it's, it's going to be a cruel summer, bitch. Yes, yes, truly. Because, yeah, we got a clip from um, back to December, which is off of Speak Now, in the... To all... Uh, the no, summer yeah. I turned pretty. Mm-hmm. I always, I always do that. Yeah. Okay. So this, uh, this is the last thing. But it, sour was purple. Yes. So do you think it's like should she have changed the color because now she's in her guts era, or do you think she again kept purple because it's her color, or do you think it? It's just fucking weird that Speak yeah. Now is coming out right now yeah. and and it's just hard it's to say. Purple. Yeah, it's hard to say. I think people are like, well, she should have done a new color for a new album like okay but then you're gonna be accused of doing another taylor swift thing so you're like she can't win and so i'm like to me i'm like no so we also don't know what the whole look is going to be of the album so the fact that vampire just has that purple element to me on the imagery is like i think it actually is i think it's smart because it's pulling in the sour it's like totally this is from the time but it's like different or whatever so i don't i I don't think olivia's trying to designate colors to the muses at in that specific way it's more of like an aesthetic choice for her uh versus a muse related element so like red being jake or whatever you know um yeah and it's so smart because i think that olivia and taylor's music is good on its own mm-hmm. but adding this layer of mystery around the muse um around the unscrambling of the letters and the like you know the giving tidbits and secrets like it just brings them to a whole nother level mm-hmm. that like people like adele and stuff that don't do this stuff like just I don't, don't care. have yeah, yeah i really don't care about her music and so many yeah. other people's music for the same yeah. reason it, it really, exactly it doesn't hit for me so i'm ex- I'm very excited, and I say stream both, please. Yes, stream both. Can't wait for Guts. Can't wait for Speak Now, Taylor's version. (laughs) And that's that. And that's that, and we will get death threats, I'm sure. (laughs) Yeah, people have already turned off this episode. (laughs) Yeah, and unsubscribed. (laughs) They're like, she went to QAnon on the Gaylor stuff. (laughs) (laughs) Girlfriends, I did not. I could go more, so. No, same. I'm like. (laughs) I'm like, Jasmine, you haven't even scratched the surface. <laughs> like, uh, okay, Jenna, this is so much fun. Where can the listeners find you and anything else you want to plug? Yeah, make sure you follow me on my Unhinged podcasts, uh, Date Card Pod, Supermassive Twilight Hole, and I also do cover with my friend Blue the Our Flag Means Death uh, show from HBO, which is a Taika with TT project that is about gay pirates. It's a very good show, so make sure you follow that podcast at You Fancy a Fine Podcast. You can find me on all of the platforms at Jenna with a Smile, and 
I'm doing I'm doing some silly stuff. If you're interested in the queer ultimatum on Date Card Pod, I did uh, about four or five episodes recapping that show, including interviewing two of the people from the show. And I have a couple other interviews lined up for that. So check Sick. us out for that. Yeah. Love that. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for coming on. Thank you. This is the best. <laughs> I feel so therapized. I, I was literally just thinking, I feel like I got so much off my chest this morning <laughs> that was just sitting there that I needed to get off. I love that. <laughs> And there you have it. Thank you so much for listening. And thank you to Jenna for joining me on today's episode. If you enjoyed hearing our combo, stick around for our In Just Like That bonus episode coming out Monday, July 3rd. And you can follow me on socials. I'm going to be posting a lot of AGLT memes Jenna made. So you can follow me at RTBB Podcast on all socials. And... You can subscribe to our Patreon, patreon.com slash RTBP podcast to join the inner circle of the Petty Betties where you get access to 41 episodes and, and our private Discord channel. Okay, friends, I hope you're safe and healthy out there. As always, I'm your host, Tori, and I am ready to be petty. See you soon. Bye.